This is still the coolest device I own. I use it every day for work, leisure, and for fun. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through my setup, new features, a few tricks, my apps, and how and why I use this bad boy every single day. But first, let's address the elephant in the room. This is not the Mini 7. I bought it three years ago and I'm not upgrading because it's not worth it. It has the same design, the same display, meaning it also comes with the scrolling problem, which to be honest, I've never noticed because I don't read like this. Who does? It has the same battery life, the only differences are it offers Apple Pencil Pro support, so if you have an older version like I do, it won't work, something to consider. The base storage is 128GB, so double the amount for the same price, which is nice, but here is my storage after 3 years of daily use, only 30GB out of 64 used. Keep in mind I don't have many apps and I don't store heavy files on my iPad, only books and music. The new iPad is a little bit faster but not a big deal for me. I don't need a faster iPad for the things that I do. I don't edit videos on my iPad, only psychopaths edit videos on iPads. Really. Maybe upgrading my laptop makes more sense because of the heavy video editing I do, but I also haven't done it because it still does the job well. Sometimes I wish I had more storage, but not the end of the world. You know, now that I think about it, I never have the latest tech. I guess my philosophy when it comes to buying new tech or things in general is if it's going to make my life exponentially better and easier, then I go for it. But I find that I usually stay with the same devices for at least 5 years and I think you should do the same. Back to the iPad, if you don't have a 6 and you're in the market for an iPad mini, then of course, go for the latest. If you've watched my videos before, you know I am into black and white and simple setups. I have a black paper texture photo as my wallpaper, I think it looks cool and it makes it feel like an extension of a notebook or a book. The lock screen is empty, I don't need quick access to any of the apps on my iPad, maybe music, but when I listen to music from the iPad, the music widget appears here as long as the app is open. To force quit apps on your iPad, you need to swipe up but leave your finger a little longer until you see the apps. I had to google that. You can quickly customize the look of your lock or home screen by tapping and holding for a second, choose another wallpaper you've used before, or add widgets if you like, very similar to the iOS 18. On the home screen I have the same wallpaper, if you want your apps to go from this to this, tap anywhere on the home screen then edit and you'll see customize. You can choose between small or large with no label, no difference on the home dock. Then choose tinted and make sure this lighter here is on white to make the apps pop a little more. You can also play with the brightness of the wallpaper, I prefer the brighter look. Before we go any further, I want to take a few seconds to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Gamma. Gamma is a pretty cool website that I've been using to make presentations for my clients in seconds, literally. If you still use PowerPoint, you're missing out. Gamma creates presentations, personal portfolios, and websites with AI, including images and everything. Here's how it works. Let's go with Generate, describe what you like to make. It can be a one-line prompt, but I want to be more specific. This is an elevator pitch for a client. I do a lot of freelance work besides these videos because I like it and I have to pay the bills. 8 cards, default, generate outline, the cards for the presentation, and voila! In a matter of seconds, Gamma creates a presentation for you, so fast. It is a great starting point, you can tweak and edit to your liking. Say you want to change the photos, a different AI prompt, or you can upload your own images. Change the font, upload videos or media, so many options and then have a killer presentation. There are a lot of templates, themes, custom fonts and inspiration you can use as a starting point. If you're someone who has to make a lot of presentations after meetings for your boss or someone else and you're stuck with that work, Gamma is gonna help you a lot and it's free. Go and check it out at gamma.app. I'll leave all the info down in the video description. Thank you Gamma for sponsoring this video. I use my iPad mostly for reading, leisure and work. These are the apps I use the most. My reading apps, Kindle for books, printed books will never go out of fashion. The experience is way better, I buy them whenever I can, but Kindle on iPad is great too. It has a lot of cool features, highlighting, taking notes, dictionary, Wikipedia, love the form factor, 
It feels like a small book in your hands and is more convenient when you travel or move around a lot. And you have more reading options as well. I like the New Yorker for articles and Apple Mail for newsletters. For work, Notion, that I mainly use on my iPad as a second screen for when I am editing videos and need to see my notes at the same time. Apple products have this really cool thing that allows your mouse and keyboard to move between nearby devices. So when I'm editing, I can point to my iPad and write something, strike through or check a to-do box. It is very useful when I'm editing. Milanote, the app I use to go in-depth into my creative projects. It is great for mood boarding, brainstorming, and visual representation of a project. If you want to link images or articles and write, the iPad experience is cool because of the magic pen. However, and this is going to be controversial, but even though this pen works great, and I did use it a lot for sketching a while ago, nothing beats the feeling of pen to paper. Nothing. I'm old. You have a lot of options for widgets, I think most of the apps, these are the ones I have. YouTube Music, because the iPad is my go-to device to have linked to my speaker to listen to music pretty much all the time. It's also very convenient for when people come over, like, hey, here's my iPad, play anything you want, and stay away from my laptop. You know how sometimes when you give your cell phone to people to play music, they end up checking your browsing history, reading your messages, and watching your videos and selfies? Why? If you want to prevent that from happening, you can require Touch or Face ID to open any app. I have it set up for the apps with sensitive information in my iPad like Mail and Notion. The other widgets, Calendar for a quick glance when I'm planning my work days, events or trips. The weather app and a digital clock. That's it. Swipe left and I have the status of my batteries, the word of the day and the YouTube music widget. Swipe right and I have all of the apps. I do have more apps that I use sometimes like Airbnb, Trip.com for my trips, Safari and all of the Apple apps. Now, I don't have social media, YouTube or Netflix on my iPad because I don't use it for that kind of entertainment. And I know myself. I know that if I have the option of Instagram or YouTube right next to Kindle, I'll be distracted and I don't wanna be. I only download Netflix or Apple TV when I travel and I know I'll be watching content. I have a few accessories that make a hell of a difference. A paper filled screen protector with a matte look and a really nice texture is a hell of a difference for reading or writing. This case by Moth, I've had it for years, it still looks great, really nice feel when you hold it and it has a little compartment for the pen so it feels safer when you go out. I have another case by Moth with an origami design that I bring with me when I travel if I know I am going to be using the iPad as a second screen. Screen. Overall, this iPad is still a great device, the only issue I have with it is the battery life. A while ago, one of my friends told me the magic pen was the one draining my battery. And it is true, when the pen is not attached to the iPad, the battery lasts longer. That's why this is my go-to case. Alright, that's it for this one, thank you so much for watching, I'll leave some videos here for you to watch next and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya!